So good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are back to what is called graveyard shift, which is the after lunch shift, but it is going to be one of those sessions which will be power packed, given that we are dealing with an industry that has been, well, not once, not twice, but many times over being uh, hit by numerous tsunamis, literally the tsunami and many more. Uh, the last one was the Easter attacks and then this year came COVID. The tourism industry struggling eternally, uh, rearing its head, putting its head up, and then we are back to square one. So um, this particular session is about reshaping the game plan because tourism as we know it will never be the same again. We have moderating this session, Hiran Kure, who's the chairman of Jetwing Symphony, and he will now uh, introduce you to our two speakers, as well as bring on the four panelists who will be on this session. Um, there will be no break after this session, as was indicated in the um, program. We will go directly into the summary of summit findings, which will be uh, presented by Duminda Hulangamur. And in the meanwhile, Hiran. Thank you very much and uh, Aibo one to all. Uh, my pleasant task is to introduce our uh, first speaker today. Uh, I think all of you know by now that uh, there is a Q&A uh, box where if you have any questions to answer. And there'll be also a poll uh, popping up uh, sometime later on. So just uh, uh, when, when it pops up, just uh, uh, answer those three questions. Uh, Kimali Fernando, as we know, is our chairperson of Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority Promotions Bureau and the School and the Conventions Bureau. Uh, she's much more known uh, in the professional field as a lawyer and a banker. She has done many things in the past, uh, being C, uh, head of uh, banks uh, to writing law books and so on, and now heads the most important uh, uh, industry as far as I'm concerned, the tourism industry, and she's been doing a lot of work uh, to restart tourism. So unfortunately, she's not here with us, but uh, we have her speech and uh, we'll start off with uh, Kimali and then we'll move on to Oliver, whom I will introduce once her speech is over. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, and sorry, I can't make it uh, in person. Uh, tourism has been guided to create a people-centric economy, making tourism a thrust industry. Tourism is a sector that can bounce back as soon as international travel is conducive. It is an industry that has capacity. It is dynamic and constantly facing change challenges in a volatile environment. Sri Lanka has a unique proposition that we can share with the world. The tourism industry was recently identified for the first time as an export industry and was granted a VAT exemption. The Coronas Traveler Magazine Reader's Choice 2020 rated Sri Lanka second best in the world. We must capitalize on this. Sri Lanka received the safe travel stamp recently for the sound protocol implemented by Sri Lanka Tourism. An independent origin firm, KPNG, was appointed for the safe and secure certification. This is conducted free of charge. A certification also includes a QR code that the guest is permitted to give feedback on the health and safety protocols. The airport opening protocol is at its final stages and we are waiting for the approval of the health ministry. The travel app version zero already has been made and we are waiting for cabinet approval to include that in the immigration online visa application form. The next version is already being, uh, the procurement is already being, done, being started for the travel app, which will include 5,000 sites, blue, Google map, ticket purchases online, ability to rate, complaint management, all that. Uh, we have created a comprehensive tourist information database, which has like 4,950 sites for cycling, camping, Buddhist trail, wildlife, etc. Recently, we had a live streaming for the first time, uh, the Couch Safari, uh, which was uh, shown all over the world. It was a phenomenal su success. The concept was stay at home today and travel tomorrow. 
Uh, we use multi-prong approach using social media and all the channels. And Sri Lanka, the Facebook reached 7 million uh, viewers during the campaign. And it had 11, 000, uh, 11 million impressions on Facebook, actually. Uh, the promotion is, of course, critical for tourism. Uh, however, uh, there has been only one integrated promotion in the history of uh, Sri Lanka tourism, which took place, I believe, about 10 years ago. Uh, the new uh, comprehensive global communication campaign has received the cabinet uh, minister's approval early this year. The procurement process has commenced. Uh, we are focusing on wellness, Ayurveda, the Hela Vedakama, film tourism, adventure, you know, all that. Uh, so those are the areas that we will immediately focus on post-COVID. Uh, the research roadmap uh, is actually currently being developed uh, with the support of MDF Australia. We have started implementing a visitor experience unit. The focus in the past has been to promote country-wise. Uh, however, the global trend has been for several years that promotion needs to be focused on like experiences, whether it is adventure or wellness, um, culture, food, etc. During the year, we won several accolades and recognitions, uh, which we are proud of. We have had several earned media. Uh, Al Jazeera uh, had an inside story on Sri Lanka, BBC, uh, CNN, CNBC all provided free uh, coverage for us for one month, some for longer. Nile TV uh, gave us coverage uh, for the Mediterranean traveler. So it's time to position Sri Lanka. Uh, in, in the global traveler's mind. So what we will do is we will adopt a contemporary tourism approach, focusing on reaching the consumer, actually, with the digital use of digital and con contemporary promotional scope. Um, the contemporary promotion will be, will be used to integrate the trade partners as well, such as the tour operators who have been key uh, contributors in the tourism industry. So we will work together to reach the consumer uh, more unlike before. In conclusion, post-COVID recovery would include, you know, continuing the support we have given uh, to the industry, the bigger businesses, as well as the small and medium-sized uh, tour guides or drivers and so on. The airport opening protocol, uh, which we spending the approval of Ministry of Health, no sooner that is done, the announcement will be made for the airport opening. Um, the decision is not mine, but the health would have to give us a go ahead. The domestic campaign uh, will, will, will be launched. We've already selected the PR agency. The safe and secure awarding certificate will continue. Already 60, over 60 hotel years have uh, been awarded it and about 12, Travel agents have been uh, awarded it. As I mentioned, the global promotion campaign is it's a long, arduous, uh, difficult process, but it has started. The, cha the change in, I think, the tourism model, if you like, uh, started. I mean, people say it started after COVID, but I think somehow the, the, the tourism model change started even before uh, the health pandemic, uh, you know, with travelers looking for experiences and connection with the community when they travel. The online travel agencies who started dominating global travel uh, grew due to the growth of the internet and social media. And it sort of met the pent up demand for travelers looking for experiences that are authentic and started creating custom travel itineraries based on their own sort of research. So post COVID-19, the traditional mass tourism model has been further impacted. You know, supporting the community-based tourism where local experiences are shared with the travelers, provided them the opportunity to immerse like themselves in local communities and a source of income more important to the communities. And this is something we also need to embrace. The, the, the major millennium traveler segment and people who emulate the millennium travelers, like people like myself or much older, you know, we look for unique experiences. So travelers, I think, will, will spend much more on unique travel activities that will contribute also to our communities. Sustainable tourism is of course at the forefront, unlike ever before. Uh, and that really has created a unique opportunity for, for us in Sri Lanka to develop this and each one of us needs to embrace this. There are several regulations and guidelines we will be bringing in uh, to encourage people to move in that direction. 
uh, it is necessary to brand the destination with segmented marketing in terms of experiences, not necessarily based on someone's nationality. So we need to make a, a shift to that and that process has, has started. Uh, post the pandemic, more emphasis will be placed to reach the consumer, particularly through the digital channels where travelers use sort of generated their own content, you know, such as storytelling. We should provide content that is more sort of effective, compelling, authentic, uh, and differentiates Sri Lanka with its unique attributes, which will provide much needed economic benefits in rural and remote areas. So with the support of all stakeholders and all our citizens, uh, Sri Lanka can Sri Lanka can achieve significant success in tourism. Thank you so much. I go. So let us say thank you to Kimali. We are sorry that she is not here uh, with us due to other prior commitments. Uh, she had uh, to be away. Uh, but thank you again, uh, Mrs. Kimali Fernando, for those encouraging and positive words uh, that will kick off our session.